Less than a year after Henry's birth, Jasper and I chose me a second husband. My son needed security and protection. We settled on Henry Stafford, my second cousin, and ours was a pleasant and harmonious union. We lived in what was to begin with a rather dilapidated Woking Palace, a place that would offer me solitude and which gave me great satisfaction to restore. We lived off the income from my extensive estates. And my father-in-law, first Duke of Buckingham, was also very generous to us. For a time, I had to suffer being parted from my son. He remained with his uncle, Jasper, and his stepfather back at Pembroke. Jasper was to be instrumental in Henry's upbringing, mentoring him and preparing him for what was to come. The Wars of the Roses raged. Uncertainty and fear were constant companions to all. Then, in 1461, at the Battle of Towton, the Yorkists were victorious. Edward IV claimed the crown. My father-in-law was killed and Jasper was forced to flee, first to Scotland and then on to France, where, once established, he would muster support for our Lancastrian cause. My Henry's lands were seized for the king's brother, the Duke of Clarence, and now abandoned without the protection of his uncle, my young son became the ward of Sir William Herbert. Oh, thank the Lord, I was allowed to visit him often. And so, for eight years, I bided my time, secretly reinforcing to Henry his destiny. Then came, came a window of opportunity. George Clarence, aided by the Earl of Warwick, led a rebellion against Edward. I negotiated custody of my son, together with the reinstatement of his lands. Alas, it was short-lived. Edward quickly wrestling back power. Not to be thwarted, Warwick was like a dog with a bone. His efforts rewarded when, praise be, our Lancastrian Henry the Sixth was returned to the throne. Within a few months, the House of York were victorious at the Battle of Barnet, and then, more decisively, in May, at the Battle of Tewkesbury, where the heir, Edward, Prince of Wales, was slain. Jasper, who had recently returned to England, was forced once more to flee. I hated to say it, but I knew there was only one way to secure my 13-year-old son's safety. He must go with Jasper to France. I said goodbye to my boy. I was not to see him again until he returned a man 14 years later. But that was not the only loss I suffered. My dear husband, Henry Stafford, dying of his battle wounds. Oh, I was once more a widow, an undesirable status. So I looked to take a third husband. One to offer me protection, give me status and position. I would stop at nothing in pursuit of my cause. Thomas Stanley, Lord Har Constable, was a good match. More importantly, he would grant me access to Edward IV and his Queen Elizabeth Woodville. With this marriage, I would position myself right at the centre of court and prepare the way for my son's rise. I ingratiated myself with the Queen such that I was appointed godmother to one of the York princesses. Edward appeared to see the potential of my son and he muted he would make a perfect husband for his daughter Elizabeth. 
publicly. I extolled the virtues of such a match, yet I remained suspicious of his motives. I still had my ways of getting word to my son, and so I alerted him to this potential deception. My patience was rewarded. Upon Edward's death, the throne was seized by his brother, Richard, Duke of Gloucester. I returned to court, into the service of the new queen, Anne Neville, and quickly became favoured. Indeed, I was honoured with carrying her train at the coronation. Convinced of my loyalty to the new crown, I wasted no time in negotiating with Richard for the safe return of my son. However, in the background, I kept my close contact with the former queen, Elizabeth Woodville. Secretly, taking up her cause and attempting to discover the whereabouts of her two young sons. They had been observed playing happily in the tower, safe and healthy. Yet now rumours abounded. These two children had been murdered. By whom is still a matter of much debate. Richard needed his rule to be undisputed. Living heirs to the deceased king would jeopardise his position for sure. That their removal from the line of succession most certainly cleared the path for my son. I will not dispute. Thus, I leave you, dear viewer, to draw your own conclusions.